hopefully we'll have some more fun stuff in the next one when we get those kitchen cabinets and st start getting them in. Welcome back to episode 23 of Not Necessarily HVAC. We still have no kitchen cabinets. Been working on painting the windows, getting everything, well, the windows and the door frames. Got a couple of doors here ready to be painted. Uh, also worked on that pizza a little while ago, but that probably don't count. The uh, doors painted up pretty, I think. The ones I used at my house were smooth and they were a buyer to paint and keep them smooth and not see any brush marks or anything. But these, these here wood grain <laughs> doors tend to be a lot, a lot easier to uh, paint and make look good. There's this little closet door over here too. Uh, I'm no painter, but I think it'll do. It's a tough thing for me is to cut this stuff in uh, like that. I just, uh, I just don't like it. Don't have the patience for it. Okay, when those guys on HGTV do a, a house, a renovation, or even tear one down and put it back, they always try to save something from the original house and put it back into the house. Uh, whether they frame it or whatnot, they, they do something like that. But uh, I, uh, I wanted to pick up that same theme on this house. Anybody that was with me back in episode, I think it was episode three, when we were gutting the house, uh, when I was in the kitchen there, uh, there was a... Uh, Someone had taken paint on their fingertip and written on the inside of the uh, building paper, inside the wall. So, I had to uh, do my hatch here for the attic. And I thought, what a better place to recreate that than right there. Somebody can see it someday if they ever go into the attic and <laughs> kept a little bit of the old house here. I don't always get a chance to respond to comments on the video, I try. I do read them all, they come across my phone and I can see them. And uh, I noticed on the last video, there was a question about uh, one of the outlets. Someone said it was upside down. And of course, a couple other people chimed in, no, it's not, it needs to be the other way. As far as I know, they can be either direction. This is what a lot of people consider the right way. And I do it that way for washing machines and refrigerators, things that have a molded plug that fit tight to the wall. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the old refrigerator that was in the house when I bought it. And if you notice, that molded plug, if you have the cord hanging down the wall, then that ground's gonna be on the bottom. If you turn it this way, then the cord's gotta come up and loop back down to get down toward the bottom of the refrigerator. So again, it'll work either way, but I just, for refrigerators and washing machines, things that have this type of cord, I usually turn them with the grounds down. If you can see the actual stamped writing at the top of that outlet, uh, if you put it to where you could read it, then the grounds would be up. And like I say, either way, you can still read that TR. No matter which way you turn these things up or down, one of those marks is gonna be wrong. Uh, the rest of the outlets in the house, I typically turn this way. And the reason I do that is when I go to unplug something, if it's got a ground cord on it, there's probably more chance of my thumb touching the two on top at the same time uh, if I have it turned the other way. The other thing is gravity. If you had something hanging on the wall above it, like a tin plate or something metal, if it fell off the wall and the thing wasn't plugged in all the way, it's probably less chance of it shorting it out. It might just hit and bounce off or hit and set. So again, it's probably personal preference. There may be some localities that tell you to turn it one way or another, but uh, either way will work. That's why they mark it both ways. And on another comment, a fellow noticed I said something when I uh, put too much glue on the cabinet about it being perfect. And uh, said something about Vice Grip Garage. And to you I say, well I'll be dipped. I've got the kitchen area cleaned out and that's because the cabinets are here. Ordinarily, most people hang the wall cabinets first. That's because you can get right in here against the wall and, and work on them. Uh, makes it easier to put them up. But in this case, I have a Lazy Susan cabinet going in that corner and then some other cabinets coming over to a tall pantry. 
And then that wall cabinets have got to be the same height as the pantry. And because of the way these cabinets are made, I'm gonna to have to cut a little quarter inch filler strip, chances are, beside the top cabinet where it butts up against the pantry cabinet. So for that reason, I'm going to start with that cabinet right there, the Lazy Susan in this corner, and uh, work my cabinets both ways out of that corner. Again, I'm not a cabinet guy, so that may be exactly the wrong thing to do, but I can't think of another way to make sure I get everything lined up right at the end. So what I'll do first though, I'll take a level and go around on the subfloor here and try to find the highest point where these base cabinets are gonna be setting because they, they start right here and wrap all the way around to here. So at any point, you can always shim, but it's hard to lower a cabinet. And you wanna keep them as level as you can, especially depending on what type of countertop you use. You wind up with a granite slab or something in here you, you definitely want to get them pretty level because that stuff don't don't give any well it was actually easier just to kind of set them in place of where they's going to go and just level off the top of them to see what was going on uh, right over here is my highest point which was good because i was going to start right here in this corner anyway i think what i'll do is uh take the doors off these maybe take, pull the drawers out to make them a little lighter and uh get this cabinet shimmed up to the right height, make everything nice and level across through here and straight. And then I'll screw them together into the wall. And, uh, and then we can decide if I wanna start messing with these wall cabinets. You got a cabinet that goes in that corner and then you have a cabinet that'll come on over and butt up against the side of this. But because this has about a quarter inch offset, the cabinets only come in like three inch increments. So it's gonna land right here instead of back here. That's where I'm gonna need either that little filler. The correct way to do it is to have a panel that goes on here that's the same color. It fills it out flush with the face frame, but they don't keep those and don't have them. Uh, and I didn't think to tell them to order it. They, they kind of did the drawing and I figured they picked all that up, but that's what happens when you, when you make assumptions but I still think I can make it work and look all right. Okay, next afternoon I got started. I was gonna level this corner cabinet up and get it right and screw it down and then start filming, but I forgot and kind of got on the roll. Uh, I'm just, uh, can you see that? It don't come out far enough. Yeah, you can about see it there. What I'm doing on those, uh, to hold the face frames together. I bought this countersink. Uh, which drills a pallet hole for a, a number 10 screw and then does the countersink for the head. So I clamp them together and drill that. And then I'm just using these deck screws. They're white and uh, they're number, I guess they're number, number 10 by two and a half inch. And that holds it together good. I did uh, this screwed from the drawer side on both of them so that you wouldn't see the screws. The next cabinet is the one that goes over the refrigerator so it's two feet deep but it's only a foot tall so i think what i'm going to do is go out my scrap lumber pile and cut me a couple of legs to prop it up to help me hold it while i clamp this side and get it right at the top and then i can screw that together and then start working on attaching it to the wall and then there'll be a filler strip that goes in over there on the edge to make up the rest of the uh, distance so with the help of those two little legs i've got it stuck up there and got the face frame clamped flush and flush at the top so what i'll do i'll come in here and i'll, I'll drill those countersunk holes in this way down here and up here and put and have the two screws ready to go in but what i may do uh, i may stick the screws in temporarily but what i really want to do is get this thing exactly level and plumb and all the other things it needs to be and probably I got a stud at that mark right here at my toe. It'll be about right here on the cabinet. Of course, I can screw it back here, about right here. But you never know what somebody will do with a cabinet like this. They might decide it's a good place to keep all their cast iron skillets for all we know. So I'll probably need to uh, mark where this is gonna be in relationship to the wall and this stud down here and take this cabinet back down and screw me a block to the wall that comes out pretty much and touches this side. And that way I can screw it to the wall, to the stud, and then I can screw the cabinet to it. And that'll give it plenty of support. 
in case somebody does put a lot of stuff up there. And here's where I was talking about, I'll, I'll put that filler strip in. I've got a, I only had one filler strip on the whole job, I think, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll rip it and cut it to length and put it in here last. It won't really be anything, but you know, something to fill that hole in. Um, you could have made this probably close enough to not need a filler, but the refrigerator, those cabinets come in three inch increments. So a 36 inch refrigerator would be a little tight going in that hole. Uh, I think I did that one time on my first house and I had to cut the baseboard out to make it go back in the, <laughs> in the niche. So I just intentionally laid this a little bit long so I could, uh, put a filler strip in there and uh, make the refrigerator easier to push in and out. I'm gonna put me a clamp right there underneath this cabinet, clamp to this one to have something to set it on when I go back with it, and I'll pull these two screws out. Uh, what I've decided to do, it's just a little over an inch and a half uh, of space there. So I'm gonna run a two by four long ways down here and up at the top rail, uh, and then I'll just shim out uh, to screw it to the two before. But what I'm gonna do is take this cabinet down and screw the two before to the wall real good. I'll hit two, possibly three studs with it. Okay, I was able to get three screws in. Uh, the end of that board was right at the edge of the two studs I had on the end of the wall here. So I just took my countersink and run it back at an angle. And by the time you put a three inch deck screw in there, it got plenty of wood. So, and I got one in the middle and one at the back. So that'll hold up anything. Okay, she screwed to the wall. I got a couple of screws on the side, top and bottom. So she ain't going anywhere. Went ahead and got this 30 inch opening for your range set up. Got this cabinet screwed to the wall, got the next Lazy Susan put in, and then I had to wait till Missy got off work, helped me pick this one up and set it down over those uh, pipes, but got it measured and got them coming up through the, the holes here. Uh, this is screwed together. I'll probably, since this is a peninsula stuck out here, I'm going to be building something across the back here uh, that'll be flush all the way across through here and put some panel panels or something on it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna put on it yet, but I need to attach this thing to the floor, you know, since there's no wall. So what I think I'll do is uh, I can attach this cabinet right down here by just putting a, screwing a block to the floor. There's actually a joist right under here and then screwing in through the side of it. Same thing over here, I could run a block uh, just inside this, <coughs> side screw it to the floor and then uh, screw the cabinet into it from the side in here where the dishwasher opening will be and that would make it good and sturdy so i'll have to, that'll, that'll involve picking this cabinet back up a little bit in order to screw that board down to the floor but i think it'll be worth it and then this little this last piece is just a drawer unit on the other side of the dishwasher uh, i'll do the same thing with it i'll get it lined up with these cabinets good mark the floor uh, and set a couple of uh two by four blocks screwed down to the floor in order to screw in from the side into it. So this is probably all for me tonight. I got to, uh, I got the truck loaded up for an install tomorrow and I need to go out by the shop and pick up some uh, vinyl tubing for a condensate pump. I forgot to uh, get any of it. So I'm gonna swing by and get it. And then it'll be pizza time. Good afternoon. I left my camera out in the van and it was kind of out of sight and out of mind. So. I just now remembered I hadn't filmed anything. I came in uh, this afternoon and went ahead and marked this cabinet that we had, uh, the sink base we had located, and screwed a uh, two by four to the floor that would go from this joist here to this joist here, so it's screwed into something good. Then I put the sink base back down and uh, leveled it, got it exactly where I wanted it, and screwed it through the side here. 
Again, this is the space where the dishwasher goes, so you'll never see these screws here. That hole there was where I screwed it down first, and after I was checking everything, I decided I needed to move it an iota, and I knew I'd never be able to do it if it would kept going back into the same hole, so I just moved forward. Uh, same thing on this small cabinet at the end of the run, except I went ahead and put two two by fours underneath it, so everything's good and sturdy. As I say, I'll end up tying all this together, and I might even do a little, I think I'm gonna do a little return wall here coming out under the bar top to give it some support. And of course over here, we can actually put a ledger board to hold the, the bar up on this side up underneath it. So uh, that's the base cabinets pretty much finished. Uh, I started putting these wall cabinets up. And of course I started this corner. And what I did, I cut me some, some short boards and screwed them in down here where the uh, backsplash will cover it. I don't know what I'm gonna do back here yet, but I figure most you know countertops have about a four inch backsplash built in or or you can get one with it so that'll probably cover if not i'll patch them but uh i got this one put in and plumbed up on both sides and then i stuck this cabinet here that goes between it and the pantry cabinet in and this is the little quarter inch gap i was talking about that occurs because of this quarter inch up here at the face frame so I'm gonna to have to just rip a little thin filler strip. Hopefully I can do it and put it up through there. I think I can measure back from the inside. I can measure from here back and do it on the inside and I can probably drill through from the inside and sandwich that filler strip between this side panel and this cabinet here and screw everything together that way. Put two or three screws up on the inside of the pantry cabinet. So I'm not even gonna fool with that right now. I'm gonna keep going with the uh, wall cabinets I've got another 12 inch wall cabinet here and then we have that microwave cabinet. Uh, I don't think I have an old work box. I intended to actually uh, recess that outlet into the wall instead of having it up in the cabinet. So I may have to take a break and run to uh, the hardware store and get a box, but I'm just gonna keep on trucking like this. With the uh, cabinets here down, I would be able to get a, uh, a price on countertops. Uh, as long as I know what I'm going to do here for sure. So I may go ahead and, and uh, get a price both on laminate and granite countertops just to see how much price difference there is and, and see if it's worth the extra money. So I'll keep on trucking along here. I'll, uh, I'll show you what I end up doing with this microwave cabinet and an outlet. Well, I'm back from Lowe's. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I know their slogan is Lowe's knows, but I'm beginning to think it's spelled N-O because everything you ask, they don't have. Uh, here's a shot I took them with my phone of their uh, electrical box aisle. It's basically empty. They have a few odds and ends, but they didn't have not one plastic old work box. Uh, I found this metal box with ears on it. And because this back is almost three quarters of an inch thick, I, I should be able just to uh, put the thing down here and screw it into the cabinet with these two ears. And uh, that'll hold it in there like an old work box. But what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole in the cabinet uh, to make this fit. And then I think I'll just kind of hold the cabinet up there and get me a, you know, a mark on the wall where this thing's going. And then I can cut that hole in the sheetrock a little bit bigger. Uh, make sure I got room for adjustment up and down when I fine tune it. Because this box is just going to be attached to the cabinet anyway. So I'm going to take my little multi-tool and, and lay this thing down on a board or something. And uh, cut it out. And then I'll uh, stick it up there and see where to uh, cut out the sheetrock. Okay, so I just chopped that hole out. Like I said, a little bit bigger than what I needed. So... What I'm gonna do, I know that's a stud right there. I can actually see it. Um, I'll actually hit two studs cause I actually centered this stove in between two studs so that I could do the microwave vent up the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna drill holes in this cabinet before I put it up there. Since I'm working by myself, I'm just gonna take this square. I know the face frame, I can measure off of it on the cabinet easy. You never know about the sides, but the front's got to meet or it won't look right. So if I lay this square up here, I can see that that first stud is over here about 23 and uh, 5 eighths or 11 sixteenths, somewhere like that. 
and then the other one will be about 16 inches. So I'll mark the cabinet, drill the two holes or four holes in it before I ever uh, stick it up here. So if I just lay my squire on top of the cabinet and line it up on the back, slide it down to where this edge is touching the edge of the face frame, then I just have to mark that 23 and 11 sixteenths right there. And like I say, I can flip the cabinet over now and actually uh, drill me four holes, two here and two back 16 inches. And uh, that'll hold that cabinet up good. And also, cause it's gonna support the microwave as well. Well, they're all up. Got that box cut in. Only had one pan head screw on the truck. So I'll need to get some of those before I put that outlet in, but that should be fine. Um, So the microwave bracket will mount on the wall here. We got studs centered right here and here. So and then I'll have to cut a hole through the wall for the vent, uh, which will go into that metal box that we put behind the sheetrock. So everything should be easy from here on out. Picked up some of this one by four when I went to get that electrical box. What I'll end up doing with it is putting three strips along the back of these cabinets. Of course, it'll go over and attach to something I put on that wall over there but I'll put one at the bottom, one at the top, and one in the middle. And then I will probably do some kind of like bead board, tongue and groove stuff. I don't know, just vertical there and either whitewash it or, or paint it white. Uh, and that'll take care of this backside where you're, that's what you'd be kicking and stuff too if you were sitting on a bar stool. So you want something that's a little more durable than drywall. And then down here on this end, what I'm thinking about doing is just turning this wall back, uh, maybe about 11 inches or so, and uh, making it thick enough right here on the end to put my outlet. I need an outlet down on this end of the countertop. I got a wire under, in the crawl space to go up through here, but I could put my outlet there and not have to try to fool with getting a little shallow box and getting an outlet fit in there somewhere. So I can think about that tonight, but right now, I think that's enough for one afternoon. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to start working on this back wall of the cabinets. And I bought this little quarter inch thick bead board looking stuff. It's tongue and groove. Um, what I've done, the first piece here where I'm gonna start against the cabinet, I, uh, I actually ripped off the tongue part so it wouldn't have that weak spot right there on the edge. And uh, I've notched it out down there for the uh, toe kick. Let's see if I can get you down there. But what I want to do with this stuff is I'm going to put it right on the end of the cabinet here. And uh, it's coming up short of the floor because they sell it in eight foot lengths. And if you cut it in two 34 and a half inch pieces, you'd have a bunch of waste. So I'm cutting it in three roughly 32 inch pieces. It leaves me about two and a half inches at the floor, but my baseboard's four and a half tall, so it's gonna cover. Uh, and that way I won't waste anything. I can take some scrap and rip it long ways and put down there for a filler after my floor's in. So what I'm gonna do is cut this and get it started down the side of the cabinet here. And then I'll determine how long I wanna make this little wall coming out right here so that uh, I can make the you know bead board work out to where I'm not cutting it right at a groove or something. So I'm gonna wait and not build this little wall until I get my bead board run out here. And uh, I'll get this part cut out and laid up here and then we'll, we'll look at this little wall. Coming a little bit of a hail storm. Okay, I, uh, we put the strapping on the back of the cabinets here. And what that's gonna do is hold everything together good. Of course, it's already screwed to the floor good. But that gives us a place to uh, support this little thin tongue and groove board down through here. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna see how big a hole the brads make when I'm, when I'm shooting it in. I'm planning on nailing it at the top and the bottom right now and gluing the middle, actually gluing all of it, but not nailing the middle. But if the, if the holes are small enough, I might put one in each one near the near the tongue and groove just to hold both planks and it probably fill it with a little bit of a, a little bit of caulk uh, no bigger than the head would be so 
I have an, uh, I did secure this piece, got me a piece here to support the countertop, screwed to a stud and to the cabinet and to this board. I didn't do anything down here yet, uh, just because I wanted to get to work on that and I'll probably run it into this corner. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I thought about returning this out the same as that over there, just to make it look like a little column or post underneath it, but it's probably not necessary and uh, would be a lot of work for little return. So I may end up just uh, running the board right down through here and supporting all this on this end. So I think what I'm going to do next, I've got a wire hanging under the house. I need to have an outlet on this end of the countertop in case you want to set something up here like a hot plate or, or whatever. So uh, I'm thinking of going ahead and just putting it right up here fairly close to the top. No point in having it down low because it's, it's made to plug stuff in on the, on the uh, countertop. And uh, I need to get down there. I'm sure I'll probably put the wire over in this bay, so I'll probably have to go down and bore through this joist and then up through here to get the wire up. I'm gonna go ahead and do that next just so I can make sure and get this outlet in here. It's way yonder too dark. Let me see if I can get some light. Okay, there's my wire hanging down. And over in this next bay over. You can see the, <laughs> kind of see the hole. You can see the light coming through it anyway. So what I'm gonna have to do is drill through this one joist right here and route that wire over. I'll pull the insulation down, make sure I get it above it. And I'll stick it up through the floor there. Okay, I did what I could on the little uh, chop saw outside, so I'm just going to finish it off with this little uh, vibratory tool.
Okay, down to the last piece on that side wall, and I'm just going to mark it and cut it. It looks like it's pretty even. I'll check it, and if it is, I'll just rip it through the table saw. Alrighty, that's got me up to the corner. Um, again, down here at the bottom, I'm gonna bring the baseboard all the way around that thing and uh, end it right there at the uh, toe kick. So uh, that bottom will actually be covered up. The uh, top where I had to do those little nails, I'll probably put a little filler in them before I start painting, but uh, you'll never see it under the overhang. And if, uh, if you did, you could always put you a little strip of uh, something around there. But I think I'll try to fill it because I'd rather not have any uh, extra trim up under the countertop if I don't need it. Well guys, I went ahead and stuck this outlet in since we had the wood up and ran in there to flip the breaker on for the first time ever and it blew. So uh, I went ahead and came, I knew this was the first one in line so I came and took it apart and I'm one side or the other's definitely uh, got a ground uh, to the hot wire. So I, uh, I went ahead and separated them and turned the breaker on and it stayed on. So I'm assuming it's between here and the uh, outlet over there. So one of these should be, okay, I got 124 volts on these two. So that means this is leaving here and going to the next outlet and then eventually under the floor and over to the uh, last outlet I just put in. So somewhere or another, we've got a screw or a nail or something in that thing. So I'm just going, it leaves here, goes up and over to here. So I'm gonna go there and check it there, see if I can clear it by unhooking that one. But this is never a good thing when your drywall's finished and painted. Well, I flipped the power back off so I can show you what I was talking about. I've got one side of my meter, which is set on ohms, on the ground. And if I touch this black, everything hunky-dory. I touch this black, Got a dead short somewhere. So I've pulled the cover off that outlet. I'm gonna pull it out and separate them there and see what we got. When I pulled that outlet out of the wall, I just happened to go ahead and check and the fault cleared itself. So I'm gonna inspect those wires real careful. I guess I got so much extra wire there. I don't know. I don't think anything out of that wire nut could have been touching this ground and I don't, the ground was on this side, so I don't think it was touching here. So I need to inspect back in there and see if maybe the drywall router got into a wire. But if it's in this box, that's wonderful. I couldn't find a thing. I couldn't find a, a, a hint of like a burn mark. Now I don't know, these are a ground fault, arc fault. So it may not even uh, give it a chance to spark when it trips, if there is a short. But uh, the thing is clear now, and if I if I ground it, it's it's less on, so I don't know. It, you think it could have been something maybe inside that uh, receptacle, touching a little bit, and when I moved it and drug it out of there, it cleared itself. I took a, an outlet and plugged, or I took a cord and plugged in and out of it a bunch of times. I've got the, got the ohm meter hooked up to it right here. I wiggled, I pushed, I looked, couldn't find nothing, so. I'm going to hook it back up over here and turn that breaker on again, see what happens. Okay, I've got the wires hooked back up. I'm not going to put it back in the wall until I uh, go in here and turn it on and see if it either stays on or trips the breaker. It'll be one of those two things. Here goes nothing. Well, that's a good sign. Last time it just kicked it immediately. So 
what was I using? I got a fan right here. We plug it in. Let's see if we've got anything on this end. Strange. Okay, crisis averted. Well, we got her up and primed. Um, that outlet's working good now. <laughs> I think I'll try to uh, come in here tomorrow and, and put a coat of uh, white semi-gloss on it. Uh, I kind of like the look of the, uh, like the stain almost where you can see the knots and stuff, but I think it'll be too busy with the floor we're going to use. So we're just going to go ahead and make it white like the window trim. So. I think it'll make it pop a little bit. Uh, I've got two or three installs, change outs this week uh, to do this coming week. So I may or may not find time to get a uh, countertop person in here to get some measurements and give me some pricing, see what my options are there. So I'll try to do that. I'm gonna look and see how much film I got. Maybe I got enough to make just a kitchen cabinet episode and uh, get it out. So. If that's the case, thanks for watching.